الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. It's imperative for us to realize that regardless of what people may claim or statements people may make about you, whether they slander you, whether they try to discredit you, whether they try to defame you by vilifying you or vilifying the path that you follow, it takes nothing from you. It will not harm you, especially if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills good for you. And it will not advance you unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that it advances you. And so the terminology that's often used by many Wahhabi or uh, yeah, Wahhabism or other terms that are often used in a derogatory manner have no, cannot harm us at all. Because I have not met an individual who refers to themselves as a Wahhabi. Nor do I know anyone who blindly follows Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, even though he was a great scholar, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And aside from that, regardless of whether people try to vilify the path that you're trying to take by following the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that they cannot cause you harm. And it should encourage us to continue to strive to go forward and make clear the correct Islamic creed, that Islam is not a religion of terrorism and extremism. And even though people cry out and try to defame and vilify Islam, that people still enter the fold of, Is fold of Islam by um, in, in numerous uh, numbers. You'll find that in, in the UK, that you'll find people, uh, from, from what I recall, a recent statistic, that over 5,000 people, 5,000 women, I'm sorry, maybe last year alone, entered into the fold of Islam there. So it shows that regardless of how the propaganda, how the media is being used to distort the image of Islam, the truth, as they say, the truth will set you free. يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُتْفِيُوا نُورُ اللَّهِ بِأَخْوَاهِمْ وَاللَّهُ يُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِيَ الْكَافِرُونَ They want to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their mouths. And this is what we see. They want to distinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their mouths. And Allah will complete His light regardless, uh, even though the disbelievers hate it. So it will show you that those people who dislike Islam and dislike Muslims, and dislike the correct orthodox understanding of Islam and try to defeat it and attack it with their secularist cries and their call for dismantling uh, Islamic law and Islamic beliefs, that regardless of their dislike for Islam and the propaganda of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises his religion. So Allah is not in need of myself. He's not in need of you. He is not in need of anything or anyone. But he will complete his light, complete his guidance, regardless of what the disbelievers say. And those people who have, uh, you know, the people of innovation who try to distort the beautiful precepts of the Islamic religion. And I wanted to read in this regard what Sheikh uh, Taqiyuddin al-Hilali, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, uh, a great scholar who died in the in the past century he died in 1987 and what he said in regards to which is irrelevant to the people trying to uh, distort the correct Islamic methodology and the correct propaganda and he was explaining in a verse in the Quran so we'll go and read briefly what the Sheikh said Allah rahimahullah ta'ala Allah ta'ala وَتَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَقَالْ مَا أَشَبَى اللَّيْلَ بِالْبَارِهَا فَمَا زَالَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ يَأْكُلُونَ الْخَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَيَعْبُدُونَ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ مَا زَالُوا فِي كُلِّ زَمَانٍ وَمَكَانٍ يُصُدُّونَ النَّاسَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَيْ تَوْحِيدِ اللَّهِ وَاتِّبَاعَ رُسُلِهِ 
وفي هذا الزمان كل من وحد الله واتباع واتبع سنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقفون له بالمرساد ويقولون أحذر فلانا فإنه وهابي وهابي وقد صدقوا وهم كاذبون فإن من وحد الله واتباع رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسح نسبته إلى وهاب سبحانه كما قال تعالى في كسة إبراهيم So the Sheikh went on to say that Allah the Almighty says uh, he mentioned the verse of the Quran and that they try to uh, close off the path or prevent others from the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the polytheists, polytheists they continue to benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they still get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and are able to uh, benefit from all the good that he gives to them all the blessings and reward but yet they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the case in every in every time period during every time period in every place you'll see that they try to prevent the people they'll try to prevent the people from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path of righteousness. And then the shaykh goes on to say, Rahimahullah ta'ala, when he's talking about the sabil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the path of Allah, the Almighty, he says, Tawheedillah wa tiba rusulihi. And this path of righteousness is Islamic monotheism, the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the following of his prophets. This is the Sabila law. This is the path for us to get to paradise. It's by following what all the prophets and messengers followed, and that is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and staying away from those things and those people worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh went on to say, Rahimullah ta'ala, and in this time, whoever uh, declares Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be one, and follows the sunnah or the way of his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then everyone attacks him then he's he's under attack and the people say about him the people warn against that individual stay away from him for verily he is a wahhabi subhanallah and um those people who are called wahhabi they are calling to the truth, they've told the truth, and those people who are attacking them have lied. They're liars. And whoever uh, declares Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be one, you know, worships Allah alone, and follows his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then it is proper and appropriate to uh, to associate them with Al-Wahhab, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense that uh, Allah is the bestower. Allah is Al-Wahhab. And so that those people who follow the Sunnah and follow, you know, Islamic monotheism, that they are the ones who are truly benefiting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they worship and, and his blessings because they're using his his the blessings he's bestowed upon them to worship him alone and then he said and this is like in the case of the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in the Quran قال الله تعالى فلما اتزل لهم وما يعبدون من دون الله وهبنا له إسحاق ويعقوب وكلا جعلنا نبيا نبيا ووهبنا لهم من رحمتنا وجعلنا لهم لسانا صدقا عليا and this was in surah maryam where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so when he had turned away from them and those whom they worship besides allah we gave him ishaq and yaqub or isaac and jacob 
and each one of them we made a profit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam by blessing him to have righteous progeny who were prophets. And we gave them of our mercy a great provision. And we granted them honor on the tongues of all nations, meaning everyone remembers them with praise. Every From the three uh, religions that are considered monotheistic, that are the most well-known, Judaism, Christianity, and of course Islam, these prophets are held in the highest of esteem. Abraham and Jacob and uh, Ishaq, you know, Isaac. And so, then the Shaykh went on to say, لَمَّا تَزَلَ إِبْرَهِيمُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي عِرَاقِ وَهُوَ وَطَنُهُ وَذَهَبَ فِي أَرْضِ اللَّهِ مُتَوَقِّلٍ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَحَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ ذُرِّيَّةٍ طَيِّبَ إِسْمَعِيلُ وَإِسْحَاقِ وَبَشَرُهُ كَذَلِكَ بِيَعْكُوبِ Ibn Ishaq liyara ibnahu ibnahu wa ahbaduhu as uh, So then the Shaykh went on to say, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and when Ibrahim, he removed himself from the polytheist, you know, he distinguished himself and removed himself uh, in Iraq. This is took place in Iraq, in Iraq. <coughs> and that was his his country. Iraq was his country. So he distanced himself from those polytheists even in his own country. And then he went through the earth. You know, he traveled through the earth and he was putting all of his trust fully in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was mutawakkul in Allah. That was his condition. His condition is that he was relying and trusting in Allah for his provisions. And Allah gave him righteous progeny uh, Ismail and Ishaq and he gave him glad tidings of Yaqub and uh, the son of Ishaq and he was able to see his sons and his grandchildren who were righteous and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a lot of wealth as it is known in the throughout his in history وَقَدْ أَشَارَ إِلَى ذَلِكَ الْقُرْآنِ And the Qur'an also mentioned this. بِنَا الْمَلَائِكَةِ لَمَّا زَارُوهُ ذَيُوفٍ بَالِغْ فِي إِقْرَامِهِمْ وَجَاءَهُمْ بِعَجْلِ هِنَائِذٍ أي مشوية مشوية يَفْهُمُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ أَمْوَالِهِ كَانَتْ كَثِيرًا So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam a lot of wealth. And the Quran mentions this or, or, or points to this. And especially in the case where the angels, they visited Abraham alayhi salatu wasalam and they were guests of his and he gave them, uh, he gave them the, um, he gave them a lot of, he honored them as honored guests. And this helps us to know that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he was given a lot of wealth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the shaykh goes on to say, فِيَا أَيُّهَا الشَّخْصِ أَلَّذِي أَقْرَمُهُ اللَّهِ بِتَوْحِيدِ وَإِتِّبَاعَ السُنَّةِ ذَفْرَتْ بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ فَاعْتَسِمُ فَاعْتَسِمُ وَلَا And then he goes on with a verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا يَسْتَخْفَنَّكَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُقِنُونَ So then the shaykh went on to say, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, so whoever or all oh, you people who are blessed with the understanding of the oneness of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you will that the, those individuals will attain the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So be patient. Verily the promise of Allah is true. And let not those who have no certainty of faith discourage you from conveying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message. So that is a lesson for us to not get discouraged and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hold on to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. 
وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد